definition of the soul. The definition <laughs> is my definition. That doesn't mean it's the the one and only definition. Mm -hmm. um, that to me, that is really what you are. Uh, we used to, I use the term soul because that seems to be the one in the Bible. It seems to be the one that's closest to um, what I would uh, think that people would understand. Uh, that is really you. You inhabit a physical body, and it is the soul that is you. Um, souls can be not owned, but they can be imprisoned and captured. But they can't be owned, but they can be um, constrained. Um, well, anybody who's got the technology and the mind power to do it, but it would only be somebody who's negative, because if you were a free-loving creature, you wouldn't attempt to do that. Um, so, uh, the, the soul only leaves the body when the body is incapable of maintaining that soul any longer. Um, the soul will know when the body is going to die, mm -hmm. and it will leave before the body dies doesn't leave on the death of the body, it leaves mm -hmm. just beforehand, mm -hmm. because it cannot be in a body that's dead. Right. So it has to leave, it then goes back to what we try to call source, but is intercepted before it gets to source, mm -hmm. is captured, the energetic memory banks for that soul are wiped clean, it is then sent back to earth to reincarnate in another baby. That baby then grows up, and nine times out of ten has no memory of its past life. Mm -hmm. So what happens when this breaks down? We look at Edison, Thomas Edison, people who invent electricity. They didn't invent electricity, they rediscovered electricity. Mm -hmm. They reconnect with their past lives mm -hmm. and they suddenly, through that reconnection, they start to do experiments. They don't know why they do them, they're doing their experience, they're interested in science and they suddenly find they've created electricity. But that soul in that body, probably maybe 2,000 years ago, was a scientist working for a pharaoh and electroplating stuff and work with electricity. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't always work. i give a good example. When I was 15 years old, um, I used to babysit uh, John Lennon's father, mm -hmm. Freddie, Freddie Lennon. He was known as Alfred Lennon, but to his friends right. was Freddie Lennon. And because of my Illuminati, background, mm -hmm. um, I was asked to babysit Freddie Lennon's two children. Freddie Lennon remarried, and he was 54, mm -hmm. and she was 19. Oh my uh, but that's what happened in the Illuminati grouping. Yeah. Although, although Freddie didn't, he came from a very, very um, poor background, but was brought into the mm -hmm. system much later on because of his son, John. The point I'm making is that John Lennon had a son. Mm -hmm. Uh, John Lennon could play the piano at five. John Lennon's son could play the piano at five. Freddie Lennon, who a different woman, the mother's name is Pamela, had a boy, uh, uh, and that boy at the age of five could play the piano. So how is it then that these individuals are all happening? And what modern science says is, oh, it's genetics. Mm -hmm. It isn't genetics. Is that that line, that family, were clearly involved in music. And so when those spirits have come through, they've remembered. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't care, gifted children playing piano at three or four years old, that doesn't happen physically. Something happens. And so yeah. this is the cap. So, so if a soul is captured, it's, this is a prison planet. Mm -hmm. This is a prison planet. Um, and we're here simply to supply the reptiles with energy. And that's what it's all about. And that's what we've got to break. This is something that a lot of people were quite rightly um, spending a lot of time on. Um, we talked about the wildlife, mm -hmm. um, and humans are conditioned through their life here to always look towards the light. Mm -hmm. um, Hollywood will show films of people having near-death experiences, and suddenly at the light at the end of the tunnel, we say that word, don't we, light at the end of the tunnel, yeah. they walk towards the light, and hey-ho, and in fact I think one, one very good thing might be um, um, I can't remember, Russell Crowe played in a gladiator film, I think, and he had a near-death experience, mm -hmm. and it was very bright white light. So don't, if you see bright white light, it's a mousetrap. Mm -hmm. That's why it's there. What you must do is 
turn yourself away from it uh, in exactly the opposite direction mm -hmm. and travel in that. Mm -hmm. And again, you will find the white light come towards you. Again, that trap will come there. And you must turn away from it and you must just say in your mind, I seek to return to where I'm from. Mm -hmm. I seek the source. And you will keep doing it and you will either be successful or you won't. It's as simple as that. But if you return to source, mm -hmm. the interesting thing is that you will reconnect mm -hmm. and you will remember everything yeah. that has occurred. And this is what needs to happen. Everybody needs to reconnect because all the mistakes that mankind has made mm -hmm. will be removed like that because we'll say we don't want to do that again. And you imagine, you imagine say, um, a cure for cancer. Right. You, you think if you take a, a genuine, genuine scientist who really wants to find a cure for cancer mm -hmm. and she's working on that, and then she dies, her soul is wiped clean. Mm -hmm. She's got to start all over again. Mm -hmm. But if that didn't happen, she goes back to source, she comes back in another body, all the learning that she did, she adds to. Mm -hmm. So over a period of 30, 40, 50 years, that can be re-put onto the next one. Mm -hmm. and that's when you get massive advances in technology mm -hmm. and masses in, in science, because people, it's that memory is not lost. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're continually being wiped clean. That's why everything is stopped going on the earth. I'm not saying it's the case with all near death experiences, but if I want to um, keep uh, a lie alive, then I have to have people near death bring them back to life and then they preach about the white light and they genuinely and honestly are telling you that they nearly died and they saw heaven or they saw angels and they saw a bright light and they came back and that is the way that the lie is perpetuated because that appears to be genuine because it's an individual who nearly died and the doctor said well you know you were dead for two minutes or what have you um, and I'm afraid that the experience they are getting is a fabricated experience but they are genuine, let me make that clear, they are recounting genuinely mm -hmm. what they believe they experienced. So, you know, it's always difficult with these, these fields because they are being honest mm -hmm. about what they've experienced. Right. But they are there to unwittingly keep the story going. There are, to my knowledge, no cases where someone has genuinely died but there's been interference from a higher level which has returned the soul back and in those instances sometimes the person has seen the white light which is the trap right if someone has interfered before mm -hmm. they've gone to the trap and returned them but all that person will imagine is i saw the white light